Well, I'm at a hotel in Bend, Oregon. <laughs> Probably wondering, uh, what am I doing at a hotel in Bend, Oregon? Well, uh, I've been riding an adventure motorcycle for about two years now, and I've never had any training on it. Uh, and uh, I'm sure a lot of people haven't been trained, have a, a bike and haven't had any uh, uh, training, but I thought it would be a good idea to go and get some on the ground formal training. So that is why I am here. New uh, KTM 390 Adventure loaded in a, a trailer. I decided to trailer it up here instead of riding because I didn't want to be tired from a long ride here and the weather's not cooperating all that good right now either. But the uh, training actually starts tomorrow. So I'm off to a meet and greet tonight, and have some of the guys help unload the bike and the training day will start tomorrow. It's a two-day training class. So did you ever think about going to training class? Do you think they're of any value maybe uh, for the time and the money? Would you like to know a little bit about what I think about the training class once I'm done with it? This is through a company called Ride Adventures, a reputable uh, firm. So we'll find out what ADV training, introduction to ADV training is about. Stick around for this video. And Bend is known for its breweries, and there are plenty of breweries in Bend. Uh, we ride tomorrow, so tonight I'm going to sample a Boneyard beer, one of my favorites. Well, good morning. I'm uh, on my way to the training facility here and almost there. We're going to start our first day of training um, in a little while. I'm a little concerned though because uh, I hauled my bike in my trailer and I discovered last night that I damaged the kickstand. The way I had the bike uh, tied down in the trailer, I had the kickstand down unfortunately and it it broke. So I'm hoping it doesn't affect the ride itself. I'll check it out here this morning. Um, <laughs> but the kickstand is definitely broken so that's going to affect my day a little bit today. So uh, we'll see who shows up here. I think there's 10 people on the training plus a number of uh, instructors too. So day one. Well riders are showing up. The bikes are getting lined up. It's a uh, number of people rented the uh, Honda CB500Xs and others brought their bikes like me. Oh, I see. I thought maybe you were like doing something out there with like motorola or something. Uh, well, they are for like a... It'd be very good for helping you make sure you do it the right way. We're going to help you with some fundamentals that'll work on your sensitivity. That, you know, we have these skills we need for the pavement, but that's enhanced a lot when all of a sudden now the train is changing like this and there's inconsistency of, of traction available. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, I, so you've seen, if you've seen those videos of, that we've done, great. But instead of hearing them from me today, I want you to hear about these riding skills from four other excellent instructors we have here. The training facilities were in a rural residential area about a half an hour northeast of Bend. Uh, to be honest, it really wasn't quite what I expected. I thought it was going to be in kind of a larger, more industrial area. But uh, the facilities itself was perhaps uh, less than an acre in size uh, that we practiced on. And all of our practicing for the day was going to be slow speed, hence the facility didn't need to be that big. And it contained uh, surfaces of paved surface, gravel and dirt, and sand. A couple of things. We want to make sure we're in gear. Um, you can kick the kickstand out. Go one, two, three. Walk it up. He's going to go. Todd, you got the bike? We got instructions to start off the day on how to pick up a bike since the chances are we were going to drop bikes 
which uh, most people did. And we all got a chance to participate and try to lift on various uh, lifting methods as well. So this drill, again, we'll start in second if you're comfortable or shift to second. Pick up a little bit of speed, come to the braking box or the braking cone, stop using both brakes, head and eyes forward, as smooth and gentle as possible. We ended up having nine students, I think one student canceled, and there were uh, various instructors, but about four instructors all the time. So a really good instructor to student ratio, considering four instructors, and nine students so that was that was really good uh, the bikes that everybody had uh, sort of varied there were two 390 adventures myself and someone else uh, there was um, some rental uh, CB 500x that the folks uh, rented they also had uh, Tenere 700s like what I used to own and I think the largest bike was an F700 GS, the BMW. This is our feet. So even when we're riding off-road, we want to be on the balls of our feet. So we're going to bring him back just a little bit. He's got these ginormous pegs there, so he's actually pretty close. It just doesn't look it. But we want to be somewhere in this part of our, our boot. That's going to keep us in that athletic position. We get to use these shock absorbers we were built with. They can, they can work and get loose up top. So, you know, I, I might suggest maybe a little back in the hips. There we go. That's a nice, good rock. His elbows are up. Chest is square and forward. Head and eyes are up. All right, I made it to the first cone and didn't drop it over. I'm easing out the clutch, just using the throttle a little bit, or no, no throttle at all, I mean. <clears throat> and stopping by feathering on the brake, front brake. It's a technique that I've used before, but I didn't really realize it was a technique. So it's good to practice this in a classroom setting. I'll practice it more on my own, obviously. Here we go. Nice. Ah, good. I want to hear it. Excellent deflection. Yeah, I try to keep it from bouncing. No, there's Could no go? bounce. I mean, mechanically, we're always going to yeah, have a little, a little bit. Even yeah. at this speed, you yeah. know. Uh, but what we don't want is a uh, the thump, yeah. And then rebound. Yep. So it was very good. General yeah. out in. Um, have you tried second yet? I haven't. I'll try it. Second I'm not sure. Second. Maybe it'll do okay with this. Here we go. That, that's where we really start practicing that friction zone. There you go. Got it. Nice and <laughs> Just when you said, there I go. <laughs> I, I have that effect. So. Yeah, I know. It's a little too soon. <laughs> Okay. Look where you want to go. There you go. Oh, I lost power. I'm going to go back to first. Uh, second gear is a little tough on this little machine. This uh, exercise is another braking lesson where we're using the front brake and the rear brake to uh, stop the motorcycle without using too much pressure. So I'm doing these skills on my uh, 390 Adventure, and you know what do I think about them? Well, I you know immediately off, right off the top, after having ridden a Yamaha Tenere 700 for the last few years, this uh, little thumper does not have the torque even in first gear. So I end up stalling it a little bit more, I think, at low speeds than with the T7. That is a downsize, I think, of going to a smaller bike that's geared uh, less torquey, let's say, <laughs> overall. I, I still like it. It's going to take practice for me to uh, really understand on how to use that first gear the best I can 
uh, starting out slow and uh, braking. There we go. <laughs> that was nice. And, Thank and, you. And keeping that head and the eyes. I'm trying. I'm yeah. trying. I just want to stare down here, but I really need to stare there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially when you're going to be hitting that front brake on the gravel. Yeah. Just keeping that head and chin yes. back straight is really going to help your brake yep. and keep the bike straight. I'm going to practice that more, too. All right, we're trying some uh, turns here, both standing and sitting. Tight turns slow speed balancing our weight across the, the saddle uh, having our feet on the pegs in their proper position looking forward straight all right how are we doing we're doing good how are you doing all right it looks good so far so well so far no one's dropped Oh, did you come close? No, no, I said no one yet. Oh, no one has. And I'm not going to be the first one. <laughs> you don't want to have to give us a No, second. no. <laughs> oh. 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 Uh oh. I was almost the first. Well, that's why I'm. Uh, that's why I'm practicing. <laughs> Not an expert, but uh, hope to get better. Well, we're practicing here is a front brake braking drill. I had done one similar to this on a road riding, pavement riding class that I took. So I'm still not getting the knees. I'm seeing your knees. Oh, yeah, up. yeah. I'm air between them. And You're right. You're right. And that's going to keep yeah. you from getting that loose up. I was, I was so focused on trying to keep my eyes forward and you're nailing yeah, that. I, I, I gotta do more. I gotta multitask There's now. Another There's an, another couple of steps to it, right? Yep. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there's always multiple things. You know, gotta look forward and the positions of the knees and moving the body is a lot to think of and I think it comes with time with practice and that's uh, one of the you know you don't just learn it all just by taking one class it's like going to any school you need to practice we are getting ready to go play in the sandbox uh, but we're gonna see a demo first before we get to try our skills Ooh, a slippery slide. <laughs> Youth, I'll tell you, young folks. <laughs> well done. Yeah, get yourself nice and square for your takeoff. Right. Remember to look down range, let Chris bring you home. All right, here I go in the sand.
right at the end. Almost there. Is that on the good side or the bad side? Uh, well, that's the good side. Oh, okay. Which is now the bad side, right? <laughs> you okay? No, I'm, I'm fine. I'm just, I was uh, celebrating too early. Oh. <laughs> I was bringing my arms up. Gonna, I was going to go through with it. <laughs> well, my last run was a little bit rough. Uh, I fell twice on it. Needed some help to get out of there. I was just getting tired and, of course, I'm injured on my left foot, which didn't really really damage anymore so that is it uh, for the day uh, I'm just beat uh, but I'm, I'm got a smile on my face because it was a learning experience and uh, I just need to practice more well that's the end of day one I'm pretty beat <laughs> Uh, it was a it was a good day. Uh, learned a lot of skills. Some of them I sort of knew about, uh, but obviously it's going to take some practice to really hone those down. Um, and at the end of the day, all, all of us were pretty tired. We talked about uh, day two, which we're going to do as a group ride up into the mountains and uh, go over some terrain. It'll help to reinforce some of the skills that we learned here on day one. But uh, now that the day's over, I'm going to clean up, uh, and Bend, of course, is known for their breweries. So I'm going to go out to one of my favorites, which is uh, Crux, probably get a Pilsner, and some dinner, and then go to bed and get ready for day two adventure motorcycle training. Well, this is day two, and we're going to go on a ride. It sounds like about 120 miles. We all gathered at a coffee shop here, which is took us... A little bit of an adventure just to get here. So anyhow, we're all collecting and uh, figure out what we're going to do for the day. And we are off on our ride. We're starting off on some pretty mellow terrain through the uh, Deschutes National Forest. There's been quite a bit of logging here, as you can see. Uh, and... Uh, Piles of brush getting ready to burn this winter. Uh, took our first break here after a fairly easy road. I had to make some adjustments to my mirrors, but we all survived. Well, we're not just on a group ride. We're actually practicing some of the techniques that we learned um, yesterday. You know how to how to stand ride standing up, uh, how to shift your weight, uh, constantly looking forward, putting your body in more of a athletic position, uh, elbows out a little bit. And uh, this part we're going to practice a little bit more crossing over. It's a, a two-track road, uh, but we're going to practice crossing between one track and the other getting kind of used to the change of terrain, change of feel. The KTM 390 is a, uh, the riding triangle is a little smaller than on other other bikes. I, I knew that when I bought it. So it's it's not uh, ideal for standing. Uh, it's, it's okay. It, uh, I don't want to do it for long periods of time. It's pretty exhausting. Uh, and especially I, I don't, I'm not uh, at six foot tall. I'm not totally in a standing position. I'd have a hard time uh, changing gears while standing. And we're starting to get into an area that's a little more technical. It's rained here. Uh, this is uh, a little bit slippery. We're jostling around, having to pick a pick a line that's in the right lane. It's a little more challenging, a little more focus. Now well, we've got some challenging sections. A couple people dropped bikes. I came really close, and uh, and it looks like it might start raining. Hopefully not. Getting stuck. 
Yeah. So Tenere 700. Awesome. <laughs> oh, there's the 390. What a day. So let's um, get the bike up over there. You want to get in some out of the rain there. Um, I don't think I can help it. Oh no, 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 we got no you don't need to help us. We'll get it, we'll get it there. Right. We'll just get it. Uh, One, two, three. <coughs> we want to reel it to that board so you can put the kick down? Yeah. You okay? So yeah, you feel like we should call Eric and bring your truck and get you out of here that way? I think I might. I think I might. There's... I don't want to put it. There's no shame in that. I'm I'm close to that point, so. That hurt. Yeah. Him headed this way. I don't know if I could. I don't. I don't even know if I could hang on to my handlebars at this point. Okay. Then I'll make the call. Yeah. I'm so sorry, you guys. That's part of this. <laughs> I, I took my first real crash back there a little bit. Yeah. Are you okay? I am. Yeah, I bumped your. Yeah, I my That's why you got that. <laughs> Can you see it where it hit? <laughs> nah. No. <laughs> it's getting really slippery out here with the sand getting wet. I'm slipping and sliding around. Fortunately, I've been standing up, but. Walk it up. Well, we got a lineup that's going to bail. Well, I don't want to say bail. We're going to take a shorter route back. <laughs> rather than bailing. And there's another group that's going to stick it out I ride the rest of the rest of the route. But So now that I completed the training, the big question is, was it worth it? And did I learn anything? And I think the answer to both is yes. I do think it was worth it. And yes, I did learn uh, quite a bit. Now, I've been riding a motorcycle for a lot of years and picked up uh, skills and you know tricks just learning on my own or more recently through YouTube videos and such uh, but you know having a hands-on one-on-one training is is very valuable and uh, as I mentioned before the uh, teacher to student ratio in this class was was very good you know I talked to some of the other students and asked their uh, Im impressions of it too I didn't talk to everybody but um, a handful of the other students and they all felt the same way uh, probably the best part of the training was the instructors and um, their their rapport with the students their knowledge uh, they also treated the students all equally even though it was obvious that some students were more skilled than others um, you know they didn't shame anybody you know uh, so I thought that part too was, was real good. Learning a lot of the slow movement skills I thought was good too because quite frankly that's the times that I have fallen on my bike have been at very slow speeds. When either you come into a stop or a, a turn on a hill when uh, the surface would change. Uh, and so we practiced those on the, that first first day. Never really did get you know speeds above about uh, 10 or 20 miles an hour. And then were there expectations that I had that weren't met? And I'd say I'd say yes, to be honest, that there were. Um, as I mentioned before, I was a little surprised that the training area was in a residential area and on a, a small uh, piece of land, like I said, an acre, maybe less. Um, I kind of expected the training area was going to be on a larger piece of ground with a lot more diversity to it. Maybe some hills, some rocky areas, perhaps a water crossing, crossing over some small logs. Um, but that wasn't the case. All of our training was, you know, you, you would start and uh, the loop that we made would, you know, take 
less than a minute. So they were all really quick, quick lessons. Uh, we could repeat the loops, but they were very short. So I thought there would be much longer, a lot more diversity of the terrain than what it what it actually was. I understand this is a introductory class, and it's one day at that you know training site. Only so much that you can do. That's really what the reality is. So would I recommend uh, a training course, an introductory course for adventure motorcycle training? And the answer to that is yes. This course in particular, I would recommend, even though our day two was, was cut short. I think because um, if you're just getting on the trail or on, on off-road riding, the introductory skills that we learned are really um, essential to build on and to take and to practice. And perhaps my expectations were there was going to be more of advanced level, which there is, but that's a different course. So I, I have to realize that, you know, jumping over logs and going down rocky trails is something that uh, perhaps adventure motorcycle riders do, but that's more of an advanced course and not in this introductory course. So we're back at the training facilities, <laughs> soaking wet, but uh, made it. Dropping off the bikes. Get some major damage to the uh, uh, 390. Is I did manage to hit a big rock here and broke the uh, hand guards, which are fairly cheaply made anyway, so those will get replaced. And of course, my my kickstand, which is bent also. So there was a little bit of damage done on the training, but I survived. <laughs> So there it is, my uh, weekend of adventure motorcycle off-road training. I look at it and I say it was a success. It was an adventure, and that's what adventure motorcycle riding is. So uh, I had a really good time. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed all the people there, the, uh, the students as well as the instructors. Uh, thank you very much, Ride Adventures. I recommend... Uh, I recommend you to all, all my uh, uh, folks who watch my channel as well. So I hope you did enjoy this uh, video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will see you next time on one of my senior moments.